San Francisco Bay Delta Estuary, where fresh and salt water meet, stretches from the Golden Gate all the way up to Sacramento. It's the hub of our state's water system, a home to wildlife species found nowhere else, and a place for recreation and an agricultural powerhouse. But we rarely think about how it works and how long the clean water, wildlife, wetlands, shoreline protection, and beautiful vistas it gives us will last. Which begs the question, how healthy is this ecosystem? That's the question we asked in the 2050 State of the Estuary Report, the most comprehensive health report yet completed for the Bay Delta. More than 30 scientists reported on indicators of ecosystem health to identify areas where conservation and restoration efforts need to focus. We found that the upper estuary, Sassoon Bay in the Delta, is in critical condition. San Francisco Bay is in better health, but jeopardized by climate change. The Delta and Sassoon Bay ecosystems are in poor health because human activities have affected them more than San Francisco Bay. Efforts to restore habitats are also farther along in the bay and are showing results. Three aspects of ecosystem decline need our attention. First, we've severely altered the physical processes of water and sediment movement that are needed to create and maintain habitats. As an example, freshwater inflows from the San Joaquin and Sacramento rivers and beneficial flood flows are now so limited due to water diversions and levees that they can't build and maintain the estuary's wetlands, streamside forests, and fresh to brackish water habitats. The low inflows can no longer support critical ecological functions like activating productive food webs when fish and birds are breeding. In fact, these water diversions for human use have created chronic, artificial drought in the bay in more than half of the years since 1960. Second, this impairment of critical physical processes is intertwined with habitat fragmentation, degradation, and loss, which are generally more severe in the upper estuary. For example, 98% of the tidal marsh in the delta is gone. While conservation and restoration efforts in the bay have resulted in 50,000 acres of marsh in restored tidal areas. Third, these losses of physical processes and habitats are reverberating through the ecosystem contributing to unproductive food webs, small and declining native wildlife populations, and the dominance of invasive species. Aquatic vegetation, invertebrates, and fish communities are severely invaded by non-natives in the upper estuary. Food webs have become weak and unproductive in the Delta and Sassoon, while they are in better condition in the Bay. Native fish communities are also doing well in the Bay, but are in critical condition in the upper estuary. But it's not all gloom and doom. We are very successful at restoring ecosystem health when we choose to make that investment. Better management and regulation of pollution has greatly improved water quality in the last few decades. We've made large gains in tidal marsh restoration and marsh wildlife populations are becoming healthier. Water conservation and recycling in our cities is reducing demand for drinking water even while our population is increasing. And yet overall, the estuary is not in good health. We'll need bold new approaches to maintain and restore the ecosystem, especially in the face of expected climate change impacts. The upper estuary will require significant investment in restoring freshwater inflows, beneficial floods, and wildlife habitats while managing non-native species and preventing new ones from arriving. We will all need to use water more efficiently, and we need to change upstream water management and policy so that the water we conserve actually makes it into the estuary and is used to nourish the ecosystem. The bay's wetlands are also at great risk unless we find new and better ways to manage sediment as a valuable resource. Take better care of our watersheds, rivers, and streams, and allow tidal wetlands to migrate landward as sea levels rise and encroach on the land. Wildlife populations face new pressures that we must address by providing complex, well-connected habitats that can support reproduction and movement as conditions change. In short, the physical and biological processes at the heart of this great estuary are deeply damaged and must be fixed if over the long run we are to retain our native plants and animals, the wetlands that protect our shorelines, and the beautiful shore itself that we so value as a region.